Hi everyone and welcome to the first of a weekly series from Henry Schein that focuses on some of the critical aspects facing dentistry. For the imminent future, it's certainly going to focus in the next few weeks on the coronavirus, COVID-19. We have also partnered with OSAP, the Organization for Safety, Asepsis, and Prevention for Dentistry, whose theme is every dental visit is a safe one. I'm Dr. Gary Severance, and it's certainly my honor to host this series. And in fact, if you're one of the many now, and it's growing, that's joining our webinar, if you're watching on Monday, March 23rd, that happens to be my birthday. And there's no better gift than the honor of bringing all of us together and providing vital information that can not only make our profession safer, but find a solution for where we are today. Throughout this weekly series, we want to ensure that it's valuable to you, and we want to bring you current information from outside organizations as well as experts within the field. And we'll be looking to you to provide content ideas, questions, and other relevant topics So we want to stay relevant for you. Most of all, we want these series to be for all dental professionals, all healthcare professionals. And so when we look at that, that means sharing this with your team, front office, back office, sharing it with your specialist, dental laboratories, technicians. And certainly what we want to do is get it to the manufacturers and the representatives that are coming into your office. We can all benefit from knowing more and being consistent with the information we provide. Now, since this is the first episode of this series, I do want to give some groundwork from the fundamentals of what we know of COVID-19. All right, let's begin with the fundamentals and what we know of in the current status of COVID-19. It is a pandemic, and a pandemic is defined as an outbreak of a disease that occurs over a wide geographic area and affects an exceptionally high proportion of the population. COVID-19 is a virus from the family of coronaviruses and is known as the COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, the novel coronavirus, and NCOV. The initial outbreak of the COVID-19 was identified first in Wuhan, China in December of 2019, thus the use of 19 in many of the names. There is some promising news. Just a few days ago, it was announced that Wuhan had its first day since the outbreak of no new cases. The use of the word corona comes from the visual appearance of the virus family itself, having projections from the surface, similar to the points of a crown, not the dental type, or the sun and the appearance of the plasma projections from the sun during an eclipse. COVID-19 is spread from person to person through small droplets from the nose and mouth of an infected person when they cough, sneeze, or exhale. And when an infected person touches someone or something. Currently, the estimation of the incubation period, meaning the time between catching the virus and the beginning of symptoms, is estimated to be between 1 and 14 days, most commonly 5 days. Older persons and persons with pre-existing medical conditions, such as high blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, cancer, or diabetes, appear to develop serious illness more often than others who are infected by COVID-19. The common symptoms of COVID-19 have been listed as a fever, a temperature of greater than 100.4, a dry cough, or shortness of breath. Less common symptoms include diarrhea, aches and pains, and runny nose. By now, we should all be aware and practicing ourselves the basic protective measures provided by the World Health Organization. Wash hands frequently using soap and water for 20 seconds. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers are also effective. These can kill the virus effectively, primarily due to dissolving the virus's lipid or fatty bilayer. Maintain social distancing. Maintain at least six feet between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, as these would be entry points of the virus to your body. 
and practice respiratory hygiene. Cover your mouth and nose with a bent elbow or with tissue during sneezing or coughing. And if you use a tissue, toss it immediately into a closed container. If you have any primary symptoms, seek medical care and stay informed and follow the advice given by your healthcare provider. All of these are the fundamental principles of good hygiene. And the World Health Organization, the CDC, Center for Disease Control, and OSAP have great references on their websites. It is important that all of us as healthcare professionals know these basic fundamentals. Henry Schein has also created a new resource page. If you go to www.henryschein.com slash COVID-19 update, we'll have resources, these slides, uh, videotapes of these webinars available to you. And we encourage you to share with your dental professionals and your peers. But most importantly, let's look at our profession. That's the goal of this series. Focus and deep, a deep dive into dentistry and what we know and what we can really accomplish. With our protocols in dentistry of PPE, personal protection equipment, and certainly our infection control procedures, we're actually one of the best suited professions in healthcare to be ready for this but we can do more. Joining us today is our clinical expert, Dr. David Resnick. Dr. Resnick is the director of the Oral Health Center of Grady's Infectious Disease Program and a practicing clinician. What can we do to make our practice and our patients safe during this pandemic? I'll turn it over to Dr. Resnick. Dr. Resnick, welcome. Uh, thank you, Gary, and thank you for this opportunity to share some of the knowledge that we have seen in the dental profession. My name, as Gary said, is Dr. David Resnick. I'm director of the Infectious Disease Program's Oral Health Center at Grady Hospital in Atlanta and also chief of dental medicine. Um, I've been working with people living with HIV for the last 30 years, and I hope that some of the lessons we've learned from that epidemic will help us through today's pandemic. Of all the medical professions, dentistry has always been at the lead when it comes to providing personal protective equipment and instituting standard precautions. We know that there are bloodborne pathogen precautions that we've been taking for some time, and now we're actually looking at some airborne precautions. But it's a great time for us to review some of the basic information for the entire team, things that will help your patients, things that will help your staff and the team stay healthy as we try to deal with this new disease. One of the first slides that I'd like to talk about today is, is something that um, Gary already mentioned, which is social distancing. I'd sort of like to refer to this as physical distancing. Socially, we really do need to maintain contact with one another, as there are several communities throughout our country and different parts of the world where people are now at home. And so we do need to stay in touch with each other, but we also should try to stay a good six feet away when in person. So how do I keep my dental office safe? There's certain things that we maybe didn't think so much of at the beginning, such as cleaning the outside doorknobs and other surfaces that are touched by patients on the way in. Looking at light switches, cabinet handles, front desk areas, maybe putting up a sign on your front desk that says, please don't lean over. It's time to toss those waiting room magazines, some of which are new, some of which might have been there for some time, and really truly be able to wipe down the hard surfaces in the waiting area. When patients do present with a dental emergency at this point, offer hand sanitizer at the front desk so people can, do, can provide their own personal protection. Screen patients over the phone before they get there. There are certain questions that can be asked that will eliminate some of the risk to you and your team. So if somebody has a cough, a fever greater than 100.4, shortness of breath, these are some of the symptoms that you might want the patient to stay at home and try to offer whatever assistance you can via teledentistry or by the phone. Dentistry, is, as I said, has always been in the forefront of infectious diseases, and it started a long time ago with the HIV pandemic. 
But now good sterilization practices are honestly more important than ever. And we always should focus on that because we always want to provide the safest visit for our patients. Always wear your PPE. Make sure your mask is covering your nose and your mouth. If you're doing anything that involves splatter, please make sure you have a shield on and your glove on and your gowns on. And if it is an aerosol generating procedure, anything that might involve a high speed handpiece, please make sure that you wear an N95 respirator. This will actually offer more protection. And also protect our colleagues, protect your lab team. Uh, make sure that you disinfect your impressions and your cases before sending them on once we're at that place. Minimize your chances for exposure. Instruct your patients to call ahead and reschedule appointments. Adhere to standard and transmission-based precautions. And again, as I previously mentioned, when it comes to aerosol-generating procedures, take special precautions. Use N95 respirators, and hopefully they are available and in, in addition to your normal personal protective equipment. Since N95 masks are very difficult to find and there is a shortage, please wear a surgical mask over it to protect it from any kind of splatter or any kind of, 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 of mess. The American Dental Association has come out with a series of recommendations, and one of them is that they recommend that we postpone nationwide elective dental procedures for the next three weeks. So we really need to concentrate on emergency care for those patients that present with dental emergencies. For many parts of our country prior to this pandemic, emergency departments were being overwhelmed by non-traumatic dental emergencies. This gives us our role. We can help take care of patients in pain and do it safely and protect our resources in our emergency departments, which are being overwhelmed. The guidance may change as the COVID-19 pandemic pro progresses. According to the association, dentists should use their professional judgment in determining a patient's need for urgent or emergency care. Really should focus on conditions that require immediate attention to relieve severe pain and or infection and alleviate the burden of our hospital emergency departments. There is a list of emergency procedures that are on the screen in front of you. Of course, things like severe dental pain would be one, including pulpal inflammation, pericornitis for third molar pain, um, a de dealing with dry socket issues that a patient might present with, abscesses and local bacterial infections, fractures of teeth that might be soft tissue um, trauma inducing, and also other forms of gentle trauma, including avulsion and luxation. And you can also put on temporary restorations if, if we're having gingival irritation. There are other emergency cares, uh, uh, care that's allowed involving extensive caries or defective restorations, suture removal, etc. The goal is to reduce the risk while helping the public. Some non-emergency dental procedures would involve initial and periodic oral examinations, prophylaxis, scaling and replaning unless there is an infection, and please, if you're using a high-speed ultrasonic scaler, which is an aerosol generating device, make sure that you have access to an N95 mask. Extraction of asymptomatic teeth can be put off for the time being. Restorative dentistry can be put off for asymptomatic lesions, and aesthetic dental procedures should be off during our present time. CMS, or the United States Center for Medicaid and Medicaid Services, uh, Medicare and Medicaid Services, has the following recommendations. The most important of which is as follows. Dental procedures use personal protective equipment, and we have one of the highest risks of transmission due to our close proximity of those that we serve. To reduce the risk and spread and to preserve personal protective equipment, we strongly recommend that all non-essential dental exams and procedures be postponed until further notice. The Canadian Dental Association also has a series of recommendations to deal with this pandemic. Each region in Canada varies immensely, and in all circumstances, dentists take infection prevention and control practices seriously and understand the social responsibility needed to contain the spread of today's pandemic. 
While science provides uh, solid recommendations about what dentists should and should do, the Canadian Dental Association suggests, given the rapidly evolving COVID-19 situations, dentists licensed to practice in Canada are asked to consult the website and communiques of all the dental regulatory bodies in their province and territory, as well as the website and communiques of their provincial and territorial dental associations. So what's the latest? This is an ever-changing pandemic. It's important for all members of the dental team and your families to stay informed to protect each other and those we provide service to. The new coronavirus is stable for hours on surfaces. The NIH recently published a study in the Journal of, of the New England Journal of Medicine showing that on certain surfaces this virus can live for hours or up to days. It's detectable in aerosols for three hours, and one would expect that the aerosol could possibly transmit about six feet. It's detectable on cardboard for 24 hours, and detectable on plastic and stainless steel for up to two to three days. So wiping down all surfaces that have been in contact is really important, and follow the manufacturer's instructions on the, on the uh, disinfecting wipes that you're using. Thank you, Dr. Resnick, for that vital clinical information. We look forward to your contributions each week. One of the interesting points was using a, another mask to cover the N95 mask to maybe maximize its utilization since it may be in short supply. I know a lot of organizations are looking at ways and thinking of new ways to use the PPE equipment effectively and maximize the safety. Now what we've done is put together a very basic program with some slides that you certainly have access to and then some vital clinical information with slides that is more up to date. We want to get all through this together so you are more than welcome to utilize this content, the video, any of the slides or any of the documents we created. They'll be up on the Henry Schein site dedicated to the COVID-19 update. I also want to let you know that on that site is a document that's critical at this time and it's a temporary closing checklist, meaning if you've already closed or if you're planning to close your office, um, make sure you go through this list, download it and go through it. What it is is to make sure that you've shut down everything properly. And so when it is time to rev them up again when we're back in uh, practice, we can also have a document that tells you how to turn everything on and make sure your equipment's uh, at the best performance it can be. So do download this if you've closed or are planning to close to make sure you've done it all correctly. It's value for you from long-term security in your practice. Also, some of you over the weekend may have received communication from the ADA, some from the National Association of Dental Laboratories, NADL, and what they are doing is encouraging all dental professionals to write to their congressmen, to write to their representatives in Washington, and communicate to them that it's very important that we have dental practices and dental laboratories listed on the CARES Act. Now the CARES Act is in progress right now, being voted on this past weekend and even today. That CARES Act stands for Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. It's very important we get small businesses, per, uh, particularly dental offices and dental laboratories listed. So go on the ADA site, it's actioncenter.ada.org. Take action now, they'll give you a template of what you could say and just hit send. But most importantly, I'd really like you to go in and edit, add dental laboratories uh, in inclusion of dental practices. We not all know how valuable they are and even some from some of the emergency cares that you're doing, care that you're doing, uh, or when we're back to routine care. The dental laboratory is your partner in delivering exceptional health care, so please make, their, make sure they're covered under this as well. Recommend dental practices and dental laboratories are listed specifically in the care asks. Now Henry Schein is following suit like all large corporations, encouraging the employees to stay home, work from home, and be as productive as possible. That means your Henry Schein rep is still available to you as a resource. So if it's anything that we can do at Henry Schein or your local representative can help you with, please reach out to, the, this time, to them at this time of crisis. And also, you'll get a survey and information 
Uh, I can't believe the numbers we're seeing on the, the webinar, so that's incredible. We encourage you to continue that. Uh, we want to provide you information that's valuable, so please feel free in the survey or comments or just on the website. Provide us questions that you have, comments that you have, or ideas for content for the next one. The next one is going to be Friday of this week. So we'll finish this. Thank you all for attending, and we hope to see you on Friday. Stay safe.